All right, we're going to knock out one of your uh, standard classics that I don't really tie enough of, a Guide's Choice Hairs here. So in the vise, there's a, a size 14 curved nymph hook. I, I tie all of my nymphs on a curved hook. Um, and I'm going to use red thread mainly for the collar here, but we'll use red all the way through. Um, I weight the front part of it with some lead wire. I think it's 0 .015. And we'll get this started right behind there. And I always leave the tag end of the weight on there so that I can tie it down. Some, I, sometimes I pull it off, but it's easier if you've got a tag end that you can wrap over the top of, get that secured down. And then what you can do is you can just kind of kind of pull that right off there. And it comes off nice and clean. So we'll get down and get the rest of this off. Most of this is going to be tied with stuff right off of a mask. So I'm going to use a natural hairs mask. Get everything right off of that. You you could just use separate dubbing and substitute something else for the uh for the tail and all that. That's fine. But I'm going to do everything right off the mask. So when I take the mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look somewhere around the front of this and try to find some fibers here that have got some nice coloration, some good length, that are going to make a tail that I want to see. There's different areas of the mask that offer up different types of hair, different types of fur. Down below, just below the eyes, you can generally find a good chunk of stuff with some good good coloration, good modeling. I've beaten this mask up quite a bit here, so I'm looking for a nice chunk that I can use. It's about time to order a new one of these. And you got to be careful because a lot of times you'll grab a little a little chunk but then when you actually hold it in your hands, you kind of realize how much you cut off. So if that happens, just kind of pick out the excess here. That's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of a lot of the under fur, a lot of extra stuff on there that I don't really want. So I'm just going to clean all this up a little. And it can be a lot of material. So if you don't do that, you know, you could be leaving yourself with a lot of excess and a lot of bulk. All right, on these, I don't tie a particularly long tail. I actually like a shorter tail. So I just kind of measure that and get that wrapped in and tighten down. And I'm just going to hold that with my fingers to keep everything together as I move my thread down the shank. <clears throat> hair can kind of go all over the place on you so I like to keep it tight until it's exactly where I want it and that looks pretty good there good now next thing on the way back up I'm going to lock in some of this small oval gold tinsel that's going to be the ribbing for this and not that I'm going too crazy trying to save thread wraps or anything, but I, I'd like to be efficient. I mean, I came down to finish the tail on the way back up. I'll make sure I get this locked in. And the good thing about a guide's choice is you're just loading this up with dubbing. So you don't really need to be crazy neat with the body or worry about anything. Everything is going to get covered right up. This is not one of those flies where you're trying to build a nice smooth under underbody or anything like that. You can actually be kind of messy with it, so... That's a good thing. So I'm going to go and cover up the tail portion, fill in the lead a little bit more, and work my way down. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space there. I'm going to start dubbing my thread up. So for the thread, or I'm sorry, for the dubbing, I just went through and got a reg bunch of uh, just natural hair dubbing. And I don't know if you guys have a coffee grinder or not. If you don't, I would definitely get one. You can get a real cheap one for, you know, 10 bucks or so. It doesn't need to have different speeds and stuff as if you're actually using it for coffee. Um, you just take a tuft of this hair's ear, throw it right in the coffee grinder. It'll chop it all up, fluff it all up, and make a nice little patch of dubbing. 
So I'm going to go through and get all that on there. I, as always, I, like I said many, many times in some of my other videos, always do a, a real, real thin rope. I don't load this up with dubbing. I like when I wrap the dubbing in that I've got some thread wraps embedded in there for a little durability. Even if a fly is ribbed, if you've got a real big, thick dubbing rope, what will happen is, is that that dubbing will start to, especially when you start getting into fish, it'll start picking its way off the fly, even if it's ribbed. So for extra durability, keep, keep that dubbing rope nice and thin so that you can get some thread wraps embedded in there and tighten all that up. And on top of that, it, it makes it easier to, to shape the body the way that you want it. I mean, if you've got a big, thick dubbing rope that you're wrapping around, you're not going to be able to control it very well. So, oops, knocked my light in the way. All right, so that's about what I'm looking for right there. So I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to work my thread towards the back. Going a little slow here so I don't hit my light setup. And it's fine if it's a little thicker in areas where, you know, maybe you don't want it that. Because remember, we're going to rib it, and that's going to mash a lot of that down. And we're going to make our way up to about there. And obviously we're leaving a little bit of space before the <clears throat> before the bead, but there's a reason for that. So I'm just going to tighten this up and finish it. And we're good. So the rib is going to get wrapped right over the top as you would any other fly with a ribbing. Just try to even that up as much as you can. I'm making this, making my ribs here kind of tight. I, I like a lot of ribbing with my guides choices. I don't I don't space out the ribbing too far. I make sure that I'm really getting in tight here. I like that gold look. Get that all the way around to the front and cinch that in. I mean it is a real buggy fly. If you want at this point to go in and beat that up with a dubbing brush, that's more than fine. I do that quite a bit, but I don't really need to right now. We'll just keep rolling here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, you can use Peacock Hurl for this. I go and I grab it right from the eyes, and this is going to be purple. It's got a nice little purple hue to it. And I'm going to take a couple of these strands from below the eye off of the main stem there. And I'm going to cut these ends even and get those tied in right here. The thorax of this fly takes a couple wraps of peacock. I got a little excess sticking there. I guess I'll get that out of there. Good. Now, there's a number of ways you can wrap the peacock. You can just go ahead and just wrap it straight. I, I like for a little more durability to kind of intertwine this a little bit. There's also a way that you can do it where you wrap your thread into it for even more durability. Um, but without doing an entire peacock body with it just being the thorax, I haven't really had too much trouble with durability. It's it, it is really not a ton on there. So you should be fine by just throwing it on or just wrapping it around itself. And I want to make sure that I'm a little careful with my thread, wrap, thread wraps here at the end because what's going to happen is if you've ever seen... If you've ever seen this pattern before, you know that it has a hot spot um, of, of thread right there at the head. And the more you're wrapping at the head, the more you're already starting that process. So we want to make sure that we kind of watch our thread wraps here at the very end. And the last part is a piece of natural partridge. And what you want to do is you want to go through your package and try to find a feather that it, it is not quite like the rest. Um, and, and what I mean by that is very simple. It's it's most of the feathers in there are a little bit oversized. So what you want to do is you want to find one that's a little bit smaller or else your, your fibers are going to be going all the way back by the tail, which, I mean, let's be honest, it's not really going to matter. I mean, it's still going to catch fish. Fish love this fly. But, you know, it, 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 it does kind of look a little strange, especially when it's extending back, back past the tail. So I try to avoid that with a little bit of a smaller partridge feather. And again, you can use 
any soft tackle feather really, but you know, standard for this is the is the natural partridge, which which looks really nice. And I'm just prepping this feather right now to wrap it in. Good. So what I've done is I've taken the tips, I've bent those back, and I left a little bit for me to use to tie in. And I'm gonna cinch that right there at the head. Give a couple of good wraps, get a good wrap behind it, get that all locked in there. And I'm going to go in and find that little extra chunk, get rid of that. And I want to tighten that up because what's going to happen is when you start to put some force on that to wrap it, if it's not tight enough, you can pull that feather right out, which again, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can just rewrap it, but it's a pain. So I'm going to go and grab the tip of this with my pliers, and I'll show you how I wrap. So I'm going to hold this straight up, and I'm going to tease those fibers back as much as I can. And then while holding them, I'm going to give one complete wrap, and it's a smaller, it's a smaller feather, so you're not really going to be able to do much more than one. And you obviously have the choice at this point if you want to go a little bit more sparse with it. I I don't mind it. I, I just use the whole feather. But you could strip one side of the feather before you wrap it, make it a little bit more sparse if that's the look that you like. But it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go and weasel my scissors in here and get rid of the excess, stroke everything back, and get all that locked in. We're going to finish that up with a whip finish here. I want to even that out because I want to leave that hot spot on there. And I guess probably could do one more. If you want to add a little head cement, go ahead. I stopped using head cement years ago. And that's it. We'll get those teased back a little bit. And it's a pretty good length for that soft tackle. Happy with that. Get that teased back there. And that is pretty much it. That is your guide's choice hair's ear. I keep these loaded in the box pretty much all year long. Great fly. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of the standards. I mean, it, you, you see it in pretty much every box. But it's not difficult to tie, pretty straightforward and easy. Everything comes right off of the hair's mask, minus the uh, the tinsel, obviously, in the partridge. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Any questions or anything, comment below. That'd be it.